right there illustrates what you don't want <laughs> in a planner. And that's what uh, Pete Casamento is going to talk about here. I may have messed up your beginning by talking that. Uh, that uh, they make innovative new wear parts for your planner that eliminate this kind of movement. And if you've heard Bill Ethical or other planner setup experts, you know that's one of the key issues. And uh, GBGI makes uh, parts that uh, parallel arms, gauge wheel arms, and disc openers that eliminate this movement and increase planter performance. Let's welcome Pete Casamento. Casamento. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming here today. Thank you for your time. Um, a little history about GBGI, where we come from. Um, we started out as, we've been around for 30 years, we're a family-owned business. Uh, we were a very large OEM producer for, I call the shortliners, and John Deere. Um, we looked at how to, our goal was bearing powder. We took assembly in-house, our claim to fame is made in the USA, uh, we cast everything, our steel comes stateside. So <clears throat> we did that for several years, and we decided about seven years ago that we wanted to enter the aftermarket and take that same technology that we offer the OEM dealers on their vertical tillage machines uh, to the corn planter. Where we are different on the corn planter, like Rand Randall was saying, is we focus strictly on the row unit. We only are going to produce parts for the row units to make them even better. So <clears throat> what you see here, I don't know, can I replay the video, Randall? Yes. So what you see here is a standard John Deere is a 16 row planner up at centerpiece C. through the field, we don't have that. We take these parallel arms, we've done several continuous improvements. And if, if I go on to the next slide, I, I can show you right here. Deer, or <coughs> the OEMs take A36, which is a low carbon steel, and they punch it on a press. So you don't control your tolerance on our holes. We use new core church, church plate, uh, uh, and we laser cut, and it's put on the CNC when it comes in. Those are laser cut, but they're under tolerance. If you then we put it on our milling center in our shop. So if you take your row unit, you have a volt circle center, and that's 13 and 7 eighths. So those holes are drilled to 13 and 7 eighths, plus or minus a thou. I know that seems well, well it's a corn planter, but it's it's keeping it in the ground where it belongs. The outer bushing, I, a lot of you guys are growers here, so you're gonna understand, you know what a bearing cup is. So we don't cut corners on the material. A lot of other arms will use like a low grade carbon and heat treat it. Well, we take 52-100, that's what bearing cups are made out of, and we harden that to 44 to 50. We uh, take your inner bushing, and as, as you can see on the print, that inner bushing there is a 4140, Cold drawn, and in the free state that has a 32 Rockwell heart. We have about a thou to thou and a half clearance, so what we're doing is we're simulating a bearing with metals. Um, and then, of course, we use a shoulder bolt with fine threads that gives us tremendous clamping force. All right? We did beta testing. Everything we do, we don't bring to market. We beta test with the growers, um, those with precision planning dealers or gear dealers. 
We did beta testing down in Argentina. That would probably be our best example because it was 100% no-till, very aggressive ground. We started out in the southern part of Argentina on a 24 row, came all the way up north, finished up three months later. Uh, we did a total of 20,000 acres or 1,000 acres per row. After that season, we had about 3,000 wear on the bushing. Um, everything was still tight and snug on the row. As you look on your lower parallel arm, which is this can fit this here, actually can take the delta. If you growers have precision planning, your delta force bracket slides right in. What we did there, what we heard from a lot of the growers and uh, <coughs> dealers that had from our dealer network when we started this, was we dog-eared everything. I was gonna bring an arm in, but pictures show everything. The reason we dog-eared it, this part's made out of ductile wire. So when we looked at how the typical parallel arm wires on a John Deere row unit, you get the egg, the egg shape effect. That inner bushing's harder and it pounds at the ductile iron and it causes wear. And that causes a slop in the movement in your row unit. Um, all our bushings, the bushing that's pressed into the housing, or I should say parallel arm, has a half inch on the lower arm, a half inch of iron around. And the, and the reason why, like I said before, we did it for impact resistance. Um, so that would be the parallel arm in this situation, okay, for John Deere, um, where we, well, that's what we first launched. And then the second thing we did is we have a lot, we sell to quite a few precision planning dealers. So from the technological side, from the technology standpoint, we integrated the bracket. So integrating the bracket, what does that allow us to do? Uh, probably weighs about seven more pounds. It puts a lot more weight on the planter. Um, as you can see there, you don't have any more bolts or bushings that you have to deal with with Delta Force. Delta Force bolts right up to it and works from there. Um, we also, this is just the long, we do the long arm, it's the same philosophy. Uh, <clears throat> the gauge roll arm. So the gauge roll arm, you get a lot of slop, you have a lot of maintenance on the gauge alarm on your row unit. So if you look at your row unit on the gauge alarm, when we beta tested this, we made the housing, if you look at Deere, and there's another manufacturer out there, we worked with the dealer and we made the housing a half inch wider to bring it on center. So we use a shoulder bolt, we've got a hardened spacer, because you never should take two bearings and press them back to back, even though this is a static load where the bearings isolate on the book shoulder bolt and we use shims. The, the beauty of this is if once you come in in the spring and you take your gauge wheel and set it against the tire, it's set for the season based on tire wear. Um, you should have no issues. The bearings are replaceable. The inner spacer is hard. Uh, where we are different, um, we take the gauge wheel arm where the mustache rides. So the mustache typically has a hardness John Deere uh, to a metallurgist and it had 29 Rockwell. So we heat treat this. So when this comes from our foundry, we heat treat the entire gauge alarm to 32 Rockwell. There's no distortion. We don't have any distortion from that standpoint. Um, and then we, we mill these and that heat treating is there to reduce or what I should say to eliminate wear. You can't eliminate wear, the mustache will eventually wear because one thing I learned this spring, the deer mustache is 4140, so it's a higher grade alloy. Ours is 654512, so you got a lower grade alloy, but harder, so you slow the wear down. The other thing is you're not constantly adjusting and you don't have to go out and grease your units every day. So once you, with that, you don't have that wobble on your gauge alarm. So that's another enhanced improvement. And we use the old style shims. And we don't use, I, I, I don't want to use the pointer that well, but if you see the yellow washer up against the inner race, if you see the yellow washer right there against the inner race, that's gone. We use grade eight shims. And the reason we can do that, they're beautiful. 
They're really nice because they seat up against the inner base of the bearing, okay? And then on the outside, we eliminate the need for any washers because we've got a shoulder, like I call it, a shoulder flange bolt, okay? Um, <clears throat> these work well with concealed. Also, they won't interfere with the gauge wheel, like the spoke gauge wheels also, from that standpoint. And we do the same for Kinsey. Same concept, same technology. Uh, the reason I did Kinsey automatically with the integrated and I didn't offer it one way versus like deer I offer it both ways is I wanted to make Kinsey a more stronger row unit because that 3000 series is steel and this makes, we had feedback from our dealer network that this bracket makes the row unit extremely more robust. So this will work with airbags, springs, and if you have delta force. The good thing is if you have delta force, you have what are called offset rows. We've made it so you don't have to flip the, like I had a dealer call me the other day. I had a dealer call us the other day and he was talking about this, where you have to flip it. You don't need to flip it. We've, we've gone in there and it doesn't show it on here, but we, we have a, I call it like a hundred, quarter inch recess what we radiused out for the cylinder to come in. So whether if you have delta force, the, the unit fully strokes and you have no issues. You don't have to flip the bracket. So <clears throat> what I showed you is how we started from the top down on a row unit. But earlier on, <clears throat> what we were talking about, and this is how we actually started out, we actually started from the ground up. We started with a heavy duty opener. Um, we came out with the first cast opener. Uh, we machined it out of ductile iron. There's the biggest thing, if you ever look at the next level grower group, is run out. I can tell you, if you're gonna learn, I'm the R&D engineer for GBGI. If you were to look, vertical run out, with all our dealer network, we've never had one blade come back for vertical run out. There's a lot of attention to detail that we put into making this part. So when we machine the cast open, we actually had a new machine that just arrived. And unfortunately, I didn't do the video yet, but we actually have, when a bore is machined for a bearing, if you were to imagine this, you actually get taper on that bore when you use a CNC machine. So the new automated machine to the label world we live in, is, it's a gantry system. So we can load 200, no, it's 160 per side. So we'll load 160 raw castings at once. They'll get fed up into the machine. It gets, we call, I call it, it gets the bearing board, we face off the backside and we machine the bearing bar at the same time. That keeps your, from a runout standpoint, which is very important to your, your trench where we're going with this, that keeps your backside completely flush and, and it's parallel and perpendicular to your bearing board. So if you can imagine where that bar is pressed in, that could, where we come through the center of the machine, we have a quality system and it's, autom it's automated, it's robotic. And I actually was really nervous when this machine got set up last month and I told the girl from quality control to go through it. She goes, there's no taper in the board. So our bore, which is good for when you press the bearing in, has no tape. And also, when we machine it, we let it cool senses and it automatically adjusts on the fly. And then when it comes out after it goes through inspection for the bearing bar, we melt it through holes. Now what we've done there, you, a lot of a, deal, a lot of I call them competitors, when we did this, we counter bore. Now at first, we thought we could cast a counter board. No, you can't, because we have 50, 60 thou run out. Uh, so we went in and we machined like 100 thou, and we, we didn't, we had to change the casting when we developed this in the R&D stage, and then we mill those holes complete. We go 125 thou deep, the rivet's flush with the casting, we went with a larger rivet, and it gives you substantially more clamping force. So, Doing that and studying the opener, we've been able to, uh, working with David Hulu and Randy Dowdy, um, 
At first, when we brought this to market, we had openers that would run in the 40s, 50s. And we averaged typically in the 30s. We did a continuous improvement two years ago because we studied the deer blade and we always knew where the holes were stamped and punched and the size they ran. And we also changed our hole size. So that's why I say we're very engineer driven. That continuous improvement we did, we, we now say we can hold 35,000 under. It's a heat treated blade, so it's, it's really difficult, but we are really good on holding on a horizontal runoff, which when you're going to put a trench in, okay, and you're, you're, you're planting your corn, your soybean, your input costs, this is the importance of a row unit. You don't need a row unit that jumps or goes side to side. This will give you a nice V trench, and if there's an issue, you always, as growers, somehow you always figure out where I live and you call me. <laughs> so we stand behind, and I will tell you this as the designer, the only time we have failure is two by twos. So, and I'll close on that, two by two is, so if the grower has a row unit, here's your row unit, should be on four inch center. So your fertilizer opener, or your two by two should be two inches. And if it's a right hand, and if he's in an inch, that throws the dirt and puts extreme stress on my opener on the left hand side. And so I have cases where we've gotten the grower to move that fertilizer opener an inch and a half, inch and three quarters to the right, or I should say two by two, and the value is gone away. So basically what we do, uh, where we're located in Chicago, Ohio, which is east side of Cleveland. Um, that's the EDI and that's what we do. Um, Good. Yeah, uh, question. We got two minutes. And I didn't know you were in Ohio. <laughs> no questions? Well, there's one. I quit using John Deere planters because we constantly broke the rivets on the openers. And that's why we did it. So when we developed the opener, and when I took you cinch for it, okay, that's why the counter bore and that rivet. So what I'm able to do, sir, we're able to get a tighter cinch for it. I've never, I let the door call me. We've had hundreds of thousands of these openers out there. We've never broken a rhythm. Even when the two by two will throw, I'll start to crack because it's just so much stress on that opener. But you know, that's how we get into a lot of growers that we've had with the issue you said and we solved a lot of the problems. The other thing, being that our opener runs true, you don't have to set your touch point. Um, that's a big thing. Our touch, when I say you, you don't have to touch, set your touch point like two to two and a quarter, you can set your touch point at an inch and a half. So put less stress on the bearing, less stress on the blade, and work better from that side. I didn't mean to say you don't have to set your touch point. All right. Any other closing comment? Pete, well, thank you for that presentation. Thank you for your time.